Okay, so for part B, um, we did part A in the earlier video. The support at A will break if subjected to a force whose magnitude is um, greater than 5,000 newtons. So if this force, which is acting down here, is greater than 5,000 newtons, then this will break. Okay. Finding kilograms, the greatest integer of a ma integer mass, sorry, the greatest integer mass of a diver who can stand at the board at B. Okay, so let's, we don't know the mass now. Before it was, it was 50, wasn't it? Now we have to find what mass will cause. Let's call it M. Okay, so that's why we have to find the mass of the diver, or the greatest mass of the diver as an integer, who can stand on the board at B without the support at A breaking. So let's see what mass is required for this to become 5,000 um, newtons. Okay, let's see what mass here we need for this to become 5,000 newtons. And then we can work from there to find um, the, uh, yeah, then we can, work, we can work from there. Once we've found the mass that we can say, okay, it has to be less than that particular value, and it has to be the integer that's less than it, basically. All right, so now, um, in this situation now, we have the re reaction force at C. Well, of course, it changes, doesn't it? Because the mass changes. So that's reaction force at C. This is a re reaction force at A, whose maximum value has to be 5,000. Okay, and there we have everything we need. Now, again, um, we have two things we don't know, M and R at C. If I take moments about C again, that will solve that problem. I won't have to worry about this. Okay, so again, it's in equilibrium, and the clockwise moments are equal to the anti-clockwise moments about any point. So I'm cho I've chosen the point C to eliminate the reaction force at C. So the clockwise moments about C are 30G times 1.4 plus MG times, well, remember that distance was, that's 4 minus 0 0.6, which is 3.4. And that's equal to the anti-clockwise moments about C, which is 5,000 times 0 0.6. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. Where's my calculator gone? There it is. So we have 30G times 1.4, sorry, 30G, 30. Times 1.4. gives us 42, that's 42G, plus 3.4MG is equal to, that's 300, just to make sure, 5,000 times 0 0.6, 3,000, sorry, 3,000, what is it, 300, 3,000, okay, so now we want to find what M is, okay? So we can do 3.4 mg is equal to 3,000 minus 42 g, and m is going to be that divided by 3.4 minus 42 g times 9.8. Okay, that gives you 2,500. And 88.4, and we've got to divide that by 3.4 g. So divide that by 3.4 g. You can put that in brackets right there. So your answer is going to be you get 77.6. Okay. So therefore, the greatest, the great, it has to be less than that, doesn't it? Okay, because if it's more than that, it's going to break. So the greatest M is 77 newtons. You have to round it down. You have to round down, because if you go more than that, it's going to be 70, 78, it's going to break. It has the greatest integer value it can reach is 77, the greatest integer mass, 77 newtons. And there we have part um, B. And then part C simply states, explain how we've used the fact that a di diver is modeled as a particle. Well, basically, we, a particle, the, the weight of the particle acts at one point. So you can say we, have, we, we assumed 
his weight acted in one at one from one particular point assumed his weight acted his weight acts at one point one point which was B not in an area but in a point okay, a point okay that's how we assumed or how we used or the fact that uh, we modeled him as a particle okay so there we have the answer for 4 B and C thank you for watching